free public transport and a scheme to help households switch to green alternatives could help make the transition to a net zero future fairer for everyone. Now that's according to the Environmental Justice Commission, which wants people to be put at the heart of the government's climate targets. Their findings were informed by four citizens' juries who suggested changes they thought would help them go green. The biggest barrier is our lifestyle. It's cost. I think the biggest thing all around was obviously education. When I joined the panel, I knew very little about it. It was quite a big eye-opener to me. Those of us who are the jur are jurors on the program could act as climate champions in our neighborhood, in the local areas, so we could then pass the message on to the local communities. Our demands fuel what is produced. Why do we operate like this? Can we do it differently? We are going against years and years of conditioning. People have, over the years, developed habits. Fast fashion, fast foods, fast everything. There should be more information out there for people to, to realize what's going on. There's a need to engage with the local communities a bit more. Well, Luke Murphy is the head of the Environmental Justice Commission and joins me now. Uh, so your report says that people and fairness need to be put at the heart of the drive to hit net zero. So what does that mean and how can it be achieved? Well, firstly, I mean, we know that action on the climate and nature crises is urgent. The question now is really about how we carry out that transition. And the crucial message of the report today that we launched today is the opportunity to improve people's quality of life. There's a real opportunity to do that through this transition in creating new jobs, improving health and well-being and tackling poverty. But what we heard from people and communities right across the country was that this transition must be rooted in fairness, because unless it is rooted in fairness, it simply won't succeed because the public support for the transition simply won't be there. And the government has set out its strategy for, for zero carbon transport. Does that meet your brief of putting people and fairness first? I don't think it does. I mean, we obviously welcome some of the measures. It's, it has some ambitious proposals in terms of uh, an earlier phase out of petrol and diesel vehicles and its particular focus on trucks. But I think what we've called for and actually what we heard from citizens across the country from Thurrock to the South Wales Valleys was that they want to see much greater investment in affordable, accessible uh, public transport. They want to see greater investment in active transport, in walking and cycling. And that really was missing from the government's strategy today. Lots of targets, lots of lofty ambitions, but I'm not sure there's really enough to deliver the kind of change that actually the kind of the, the, the people want to see across the country. And you've listened to people, as you say, up and down the land. Do you think that the public should play a greater role in formulating climate-related policies? Absolutely. That's something we, we heard again and again. People want three things. They want more information. They think, actually, there should be a kind of uh, an information campaign similar to COVID that recognises the scale of the threat uh, of climate change and the scale of the change that we need to undertake. Secondly, they want to be more involved in decisions themselves. They want to see more things like juries uh, that go beyond just the normal consultation. And thirdly, they want to see more powers devolved and given away from Westminster uh, or the devolved governments to their local areas, to their local councils. No, you know, no plan, um, we can't have one size fits all plans. That's what we were told. And so we need to see powers distributed across the country uh, to allow local areas to develop their own plans. Luke Murphy, thank you. Thank you.